Hello everyone and thank you for listening to our pre-recorded webinar on the overview of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Status 2019. We would first like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we are presenting on today, the Wadjuk Noongar people, and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. My name is Christine Potter and I'm joined by our Director, Professor Neil Drew and colleague, Michelle Alwool. We'd also like to acknowledge Professor Maggie Walter, whose video presentation on data sovereignty will form part of this webinar. This webinar will provide you with information about the Australian Indigenous Health Infonet, the Health Infonet's commitment to knowledge exchange, why we write our overview and its new look, and data sovereignty and its importance when providing data for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander populations. As this is a pre-recorded webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our contact details will be available at the end of the webinar recording. I'll now hand you over to our director, Neil Drew. Thanks, Christine. Hello, everyone. As Christine said, my name is Neil Drew, and it is my great honour to be the director of the Australian Indigenous Health Infonet. I would also like to begin by acknowledging and paying my deepest respects to the traditional owners, elders, past, present and emerging of the land on which we meet today and the lands from which you may have joined us. I pay my respects to the people of the Wujak Noongar Nation on whose land our offices are located. It is my great pleasure to tell you a little, by way of introduction, about the Health Infonet and the work that we do. We all know information has become a bit of a problem. We live in the information age. Self-evidently, there's more information available to us now than there ever has been in the history of humankind. As health professionals, we may be overwhelmed by the demands of keeping up with the research and other information to guide our everyday practice. The challenge has been referred to as the no-do gap. The no-do gap states that the gap between what we know and what we do is far greater than the gap between what we know and what we don't know. Addressing this gap is exactly what the Health Infonet was designed for. The Health Infonet is in the business of knowledge exchange, summarising, synthesising and analysing information you need in a form that you can use quickly and effectively in your everyday work. In addition to our clearinghouse function that sees our special library house over 40,000 items relating to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, we produce summaries, overviews, reviews, infographics, animated infographics, podcasts, webinars, short films, and many other resources designed to get what you need to you quickly in a form that you can use. The overview we'll talk about today summarizes a vast amount of current information about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health. It's our flagship knowledge exchange product. But the style of the overview is changing. One of the key recommendations by many Indigenous scholars and leaders is a call for data and statistics to be more contextualized. The data and statistics reporting the health and well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people arise in the context of the lived experience of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in communities. This is known as data sovereignty and governance. In this webinar, we will hear from Professor Maggie Walter as she talks about this important topic. Thank you for your time and thank you for your support for the Health Infonet. Cheers for now. Back to you, Christine. Thank you, Neil. The overview is a major part of the work undertaken at the Health Infonet and has been produced annually since 2010. The main purpose of the overview is to provide a comprehensive account of the most recent indicators of the health and current health status of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It has been prepared by Health Infonet research staff as part of our commitment to supporting people who work in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health sector. The overview is a key element of the Health Infonet's commitment to knowledge development and exchange. From the feedback we receive each year, we see the overview as an important part of the health sphere in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health. The overview report includes an introduction to the Health Infonet, a recognition statement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and their culture, the story and artists behind the gecko, the logo we associate with the Health Infonet, 
Key facts for the health topics and risk protective factors covered in the report. These are presented to give readers a snapshot of the health status for a given health condition. A brief introduction to the report and the vast information we draw on to write the overview. Information about the context of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, including social and cultural con concepts, the history of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture and traditions, and social indicators, including education, employment, and income. Information about the measures of population health status, such as births, mortality, and hospitalisation data. Information on selected health conditions, for example, cardiovascular health, kidney health, social and emotional wellbeing, eye health and communicable diseases, information on selected risk and protective factors that contribute to the health of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, for example, environmental health, nutrition, tobacco and alcohol use. To assist readers who may not be familiar with some of the technical aspects around the analysis of health data, a glossary is provided. Research for the overview includes the collection, collation and analysis of a wide range of relevant information, including both published and unpublished material. Sources include government reports, main administrative data collections and national surveys. It also relies on a wide variety of other information sources, including registers for specific diseases and conditions, regional and local surveys, epidemiological and other studies examining particular diseases, conditions and health determinants. A number of sections include the results of our own analysis of data obtained from a variety of sources. Around 304 references are sourced each year for the overview. The overview for 2019 comes with a suite of companion products. These include PowerPoints, slides designed for lecturers, students and others who need up-to-date information about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health and a summary which provides an up-to-date plain language summary of key components of the overview. In this version of the overview, we continue to take steps to address the feedback received from our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues, consultants and wider community in relation to the way data are presented. In the past, the overview has relied on the comparisons between the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and non-Indigenous populations to report on the health and health indicators for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population. This year, the focus was mainly on the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander data and presentation was within the framework of the strength-based approach and data sovereignty where information is available. As a data-driven organisation, the Health Infonet has publicly declared a commitment to working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander leaders to advance our understanding of data sovereignty and governance. As we have done in previous years, we continue our strong commitment to developing strength-based approaches to assessing and reporting the health of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and community. Before we conclude today, we would like to take you briefly into the website to show you where the overview can be found, as well as further information on the topics covered in this version of the overview. You can find our website at healthinfonet.ecu.edu.au. Our overview can be accessed via our Learn menu navigation at the top of the page in the Health Facts section. In this section, you can see our most current edition as well as editions from previous years. If we click into the overview on the title, you'll be able to see a little more information about it. And if we scroll down, you'll be able to access links to the PDF version. There are also links to the key facts, figures, and tables PowerPoint. It is beyond the scope of the overview to look at programs or policies, so it's important to enhance the statistical information provided in the report 
by going back to the Health InfoNet website to look at other information about what is being done on the ground to improve the health of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. For cardiovascular health, one of the many health topics covered in the overview, you will be able to find programs and projects, policies and strategies and more. For example, if we look at cardiovascular health by going into the Learn menu and selecting cardiovascular health, you can see there is a large collection of information about this health topic. Looking at the program section is something we would particularly encourage as this section offers an enhanced picture of the current status of cardiovascular health in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. This is a great place to show a presentation by Professor Maggie Walter, who gives an overview of data sovereignty, the challenges faced and progress made in this field. Thank you, Professor Walter and IATSIS, for your permission to share this presentation. Yeah, Plingina, uh, everybody. Um, uh, my name's Mina, Maggie Walter Mina, uh, Briggs Palawa Lutrawita. My name's Maggie Walter. I'm a Briggs, the Briggs family um, of Tasmania, uh, Tasmanian Aboriginal person and for all, on behalf of all of us, we are uh, very pleased to be here today to be talking about Indigenous data sovereignty. We're very pleased to be here on the lands of the traditional owners and um, we, we draw strength from that. Now, our, our presentation today is a combination of a number of things. So we're gonna just do a quick overview to start with of what Indigenous data sovereignty is. Um, we have here down the front um, some communiques from the Indigenous Data Sovereignty Summit that we ran in Canberra last year. Some of you may have been in attendance there. There's not many of them, so you're welcome to grab one. But um, if you want one, go on to our uh, website, so the Mayam Nari Wingara website, and you'll be able to download it from there. So Mayam Nari Wingara is the Indigenous Data Sovereignty Collective in Australia. Uh, it's an open collective where you're welcome to join. Do we have a, an interest button, Ray? I'm putting you on the spot now. Yeah, so if you want to come and join us in this, please do. So the panel we're going to do today we have a, a variety of um, Indigenous data governance in practice and also some of the ways Indigenous data sovereignty, um, or some of the challenges we face, as well as some of the advances we've had in recent times. Now let's just have a quick look at what Indigenous data sovereignty is. So Indigenous data first. So a lot of the things that we talk about are statistical data, population level data, um, uh, administrative data, and that's where some of our focus is, but Indigenous data are much wider than that. They are informational knowledge in any format that is about us or impacts on our lives at the collective or individual level. So it's a very wide, when we first started this, we had people telling us, oh, that's data, but that's not, so you can't touch that. And we have to say, no, it's everything. It's all data. And we've got a problem because what we've got in Australia at the moment and in most other first world Anglo colonised nation states is we've got an indigenous data paradox. We've got way, way, way too much data of the wrong sort of data and the same sort of data, so the data about us that says how much we smoke, how low weight our versus weight our babies, how much gambling is done, how poor we are, how sick we are, etc. etc. That's done again and again and again, and as if collecting the data is somehow an action. It isn't. It's just collected again and again and again. So we refer to that as bad data. So it's data that's about blaming us, so it's always about what is wrong with us, with our families and with our communities. It's aggregate, it's always at the national, sometimes even just at the state level, but it's useless at that level. So as a Palawa woman, if I can't see the data from my community and data that also includes people from far north Queensland and from the Noongar part of Western Australia, it just doesn't make any sense. So you've got to say, well, what's the purpose of it? And the purpose is to paint a particular narrative about who we are as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. And it's not us telling the story. 
and it's not a very flattering story. It's also decontextualised. So it's always the what, it's never in any context so we can explain the why. It's deficit and it's always linked to the priorities of government and it's restricted. So we can often not get anywhere near it and it's reductive as well. So it's about always, you can see, you know all those reports, you know, the, the um, overcoming Indigenous disadvantage, two columns, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, very reductive. And this is what we need. This is the data we need and that we haven't got. So this is the too little side. We have too little data that actually talks about our life world, what our lives are like, the embedded reality <coughs> of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's lives. We need data that's disaggregated so that we can actually apply it to our own communities. We need data that's contextualised. We need data that actually meets our priorities and needs and we need data that's available to us. We have none of those things at the moment. So that's part of the aim of Indigenous data sovereignty, is to reverse that. Indigenous data sovereignty has a meaning, it has a definition. So it is the right of Indigenous peoples to determine the means of collection, access, analysis, interpretation, <coughs> excuse me, management, dissemination and reuse of data pertaining to the Indigenous peoples from whom it has been derived or to whom it relates. And you'll see there that it's um, much, we talked, there was some talk yesterday also about it's much more in, in the ethics one than rather than about collection. It is all across the ecosystem of data. It's supported by the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. And it includes the demand that data is used in ways that support and enhance Indigenous people's collective wellbeing. So it is quite, we quite deliberately has a very strong definition because we know well, who's heard the term co-design? Uh, co it's everywhere, isn't it? And it's all over, it's in the US and Canada. What does it mean? Who knows? And this is a problem because it can mean anything. And so when you see, if somebody asked you to be involved in a co-design program, ask them to actually write out for you what if that actually means in terms of participation, partnership and decision-making. Because otherwise it's just another term that's thrown in to make the same old practices look like they're new and innovative and actually include us. And so Indigenous data sovereignty covers the two types. It's, it's the mechanism, data, data governance is the mechanism by which Indigenous data sovereignty is brought into being. And it's about governance of data, which means we get rid of that 5D deficit, dis, uh, you know, dysfunction, etc. all that deficit data. And it allows us to tell our own story about who we are as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and also within our, our own First Nations. And it's about data for governance, the governance that we need for us to deliver our own programs, to develop our own technical and resource capacities. And you'll see a little bit later in this presentation of why that's so important. And for us to actually get the data that we need for nation rebuilding. Okay, so that is Indigenous data sovereignty in a nutshell. So we'll be sort of taking off um, more from there, um, but with that always as the background. So I'll hand over now to Wayne. So that is all for our presentation today. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about the overview and companion products or the website generally, please use the contact details shown on the slide here. Thank you.